All right, now for something completely different. And while I'm introducing my next guest, you can take a little look at this. Back in January, you'll remember we spoke to big wave surfer Conor Maguire. He was chasing Storm Brendan at that point and the big swells that were incoming at that stage. And uh, in the last couple of days, we got an excited heads up from a resident surfing nut, Rob Timoney, about some serious action at Mullock Moor this week. And uh, as you can see in front of you there, Connors are making some serious waves again. It's really sensational stuff. And I'm delighted to say that he's alive and well and that Conor Maguire joins us on the line. Good morning to you, Connor. <laughs> Good morning, Adrian. How's it going? Absolutely flying it. You're, um, what the hell was that? Is the first question. <laughs> yeah, it was mental. It was, um, you know, it was just a, a big swell that we'd seen a few weeks out that none of us could really comprehend. It was a huge blob and a big black blob in the middle of the North Atlantic, just heading straight for Ireland about to swallow it, basically. And yeah, we haven't really seen a swell with those numbers. Maybe the last one was Hercules in 2015, but before that it was 2012. I mean, it's wow. been a very long time. And this one after yesterday kind of exceeds it all. I mean, there was, um, there was a boy off the west coast of Ireland, the M6 boy. And it read record breaking numbers of 29 meters, which is like 95 feet pretty much. You know? So uh, that kind of gives And is that the idea. confirmed height of what you've surfed now? No, it kind of, the swell would have dissipated by the, a little bit by the time it got to us, but it was still, you know, there was still huge, huge waves, probably 60 what, what? foot plus. 60 foot, is that, what you, is that what you reckon it was? Um, it's it's hard to know really. I'm a pretty small fella, so <laughs> that might be taken into consideration. But um, yeah, I, I reckon I seen sixty foot plus lumps of water moving <laughs> over wow. shallow reef. It was pretty incredible. It was mesmerising to watch, really. And it really is when you're in the safe zone of your home, looking on, even <laughs> unhinged. And like uh, yeah. people like Kelly Slater uh, tell you, it's three million million Insta followers that it was nuts as well. Um, yeah, but certainly puts it into perspective. Yeah, Kelly's um, Kelly's considered the greatest surfer of all time. You know, he's got eleven world titles, one of the greatest athletes of all time, probably. So to get his recognition was yeah, that was pretty amazing. That was like a, that was a it's, bit of a, um, a fuck kid. <laughs> yeah, it's fa it's fascinating to hear you talk about like knowing about it weeks out. You're guaranteed once you've spotted it at that point that it's coming coming Mullock Moore direction, and and this is something you can prepare for. Um, that far out, you're not. You're definitely not guaranteed anything, you know. Especially Ireland, you know how quick the weather changes here. Maybe mm. in Hawaii or Australia or Indonesia or somewhere like that, the swells are a lot more predictable, farther out. But Ireland, it's so changeable. As is the North Atlantic, you know. We we basically only call it on maybe the night before when it's that big. Really? You know, you you'll keep an eye on it for weeks and be like, wow, that's big. But you don't actually know what it's going to do on the day. But um. So you're sitting there, what, the night before, like seven, eight, nine o'clock sort of thing, and you're like, this is on now? Basically, you know, when you see that black blob or that huge swell, you're checking the winds, the swell direction, what the tides are going to be doing that day, and you're checking the changeability and variable factors every single minute, pretty much, from, mm. from you see the, the blob. And then, um, yeah, the night before, you know, you're, you kind of, you just get geared up and get ready. But uh, it's Ireland, so I mean... The good conditions could change last minute, you know, it could say that it's offshore and sunny and light winds and you get there in the morning and it's howling like 60 knot winds and you just can't predict it, you know, but um, mm. this this morning or Wednesday morning was very different. So we were, we were very lucky. So you're having no sleep Tuesday night, is that right? Or do you sleep like <laughs> Yeah, Tuesday night I was up all night. I, I woke up three or four times just to the sound of waves breaking just down the road. You could hear hear like it was crazy. The whole house was rumbling. It, it sounded like thunder. <laughs> is there anything you can do to prep it or is it like outside of getting your gear ready and that stuff? Is there anything you can do to prep yourself for it? Like, or is it just a case of I've done the work, I know what I'm doing, the gear is ready, let's do it. Yeah, I mean it's it was kind of a day that I've been preparing for mentally my whole life really you know I started surfing Mullogmore years ago and a big thing for me is just visualizing what's going to happen and then um, yeah just weeks in advance I just must have surfed that wave a thousand times in my head you know <laughs> just sit at home and do breathing exercises to make sure your lungs are right and do a lot of stretching and um, yeah try and surf a little bit in between and then um, but yeah I think the main thing that helped me and made me feel calm and 
and everything on the day was visualization yeah I'd say. like at the outside looking in it looks like the freest a human being could possibly be you know like you're you're very much at one with nature how the other side of that like how technical a thing is it like are you in the moment going we'll just go with the flow here or is it a very technical process of responding to the conditions around you um surfing the wave itself for me was um you know you're just very much in the moment there's not much else going on like i said i thought about that a hundred times so when i was actually on that wave um i was really relaxed and at ease with myself and it was it just felt amazing i just had to stand there and let the wave do all the work and um but yeah, it's, it's all thanks to my mate, Barry Motorshead. He, he, he kind of showed me the ropes out at Mulligmore, so to speak, and mm. had, uh, took me under his wing and mentored me and showed me how to drive jet skis and everything. So it was quite fitting that he picked the waves of the day for me to surf, I think. And, um, you know, when it's, what, it, can you spot it coming in when you're out there being towed around? Are you like, this is it coming here now? Like, I, I know that that's the one, like, you're not going to catch... I wave too early, like the rest of us numpties and sort of like big one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there's there's so many variables to come together. Like you have to have someone that you trust that's driving the jet ski when the waves are that big. The, all the guys in the channel doing the safety, and um, that's super important too. And yeah, like I mean, on a twenty to thirty foot day, normally day of the year sort of thing, um, you'd you'd see sets coming in the bay they come in lines like big swell lines um, and he, he's, the driver puts his hand up and he says all right second wave looks good and you nod and you're like okay you're picking that one so you go on that but I mean Wednesday morning was so different it was just you could see swell lines maybe a kilometer or two out to sea just right. capping in the middle of the bay and yeah, to pick that was, it was just like, I, I don't know how Barry would have done it. He was under so much pressure, I think, the per thing. So yeah, he, was, he knew he was just putting me into the biggest waves that I'd have ever surfed. Had you been up on any before that came in? I presume you'd been up in a bunch, had you? Um, I'd been up on a few, yeah. And had a, a bad fall in one and came up and um, the guys got me straight away. It was really good rescue. Nothing went wrong. I went straight back out and... Barry seeing the biggest wave of the day looming on the horizon and I, he was like do you want this one man and I was like yeah <laughs> so he, just, he just pulled me up and I let go of the rope like a sort of pendulum thing you kind of use the rope to get speed sort of off the jet ski and yeah I was going Mach 10 I don't know how fast I was going but I still wasn't going fast enough to outrun the wave you know it was the fastest I've ever went in the surfboard and that swell is just so powerful and moving so fast that um, yeah, it ended up catching up with me. <laughs> is there any part of you thinking, because looking at it, and we can show people it again here, but I mean, looking at it at times, you're like, Jesus, he's getting going to get swallowed up by that. Is there any part of you at any point thinking, I ain't getting out of this? Um, definitely, yeah. There's, there's a bit at the end where the, the white water kind of explodes. And um, I think in the video, you can see it. I, I sort of reappear again. I, just yeah. before that happened, I completely thought I was gone I, I just sort of gave up and the white water just spat behind me like a fire hose and lifted me up I was just levitating for a few seconds and then it just let me back down gently and I rode out and then got clipped by that big lump of white water you see falling so yeah it was pretty intense I thought I was sit, like home safe and then that thing just took me out <laughs> like like if you go into that or is that I mean it's not on a pot because you could see the jet skis around we're getting a bit edgy they were starting to move in a bit are they like if you get taken in by that how difficult is it to come out of it um yeah you know it's 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 so violent and intense i mean you, you just go so deep my ears were ringing they were ready to pop i think you know so i i got to the surface just in time and the lads right. were just straight there as soon as i was on the surface the jet skis were there to rescue me so it was just an incredible job with those guys that's incredible. And the earlier hopper didn't put you off, obviously. Uh, no, it just fired me up more. I knew I wanted to just do better and go deeper and bigger. So <laughs> it's, a, it's an incredible feat. All the more having listened to you, Connor, over the last seven or eight minutes. Um, you look at it and you just think, here's somebody who's, as I said, in touch with nature and very much in control of what they do. But you've painted it very clearly that that's uh, nigh on impossible. You're local to Muller <laughs> when we had you on before. Um, and you mentioned obviously about your, your history and that there. What's the story with that now? Is it, can you 
like after the fact enter that for awards or yeah how like you should be acknowledged for this this feat obviously how did that work from here? <laughs> I mean, yeah, so there's a organization called the World Surf League and they host a big wave awards event every year and it's sort of the best big wave rides of the year that go into that. So, um, yeah, it might go into that one, but it, that was never the goal. You know, it was more yeah. just to, to surf a big wave out of Mullig Moor and uh, that, that same goal never changes personally for me. So it's kind of more of a, a like a personal thing rather than acknowledgement, but the acknowledgement is always nice too, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, it's absolutely sensational. I'm sure people have enjoyed it. And I have certainly really enjoyed listening to you over the last little while. I, as I said, had no appreciation for any aspect of it, but you did it vividly. What's, what's next? Is that you, you had mentioned um, that uh, you were out again on Thursday and like, you know, the 30, 40 footers are just a bit of a bit of a playground exercise at this stage. But So what's next for you? Is it just, have, have you, you're, you're continually, I presume, looking at the weather forecast in terms of what might be coming in or... Obviously limited in terms of international travel, I presume, but yeah, what's next? Totally, yeah, limited with international travel, but um, couldn't be happier at home, I suppose. Mm. And yeah, just just for the next few weeks, I'm just going to be looking at the charts and yeah, just surfing as much as I can, really. There's, there's not going to be a swell like that again too often, so I'm just going to take it all in over the next few days and everything settles down and process it all i've just got some crazy images in my head to go through so yeah. i can't wait to just sit down and take it all in really what's your family make of all this um my dad thinks i'm mad and my mum's terrified but uh, yeah they're both super proud like and yeah my sister's super proud of me and yeah, it's cool yeah it was a good buzz that's right they should be i can only imagine how as you were that they were the night before as well listen congratulations it's an unbelievable thing to have done and uh, continued success and most of all stay safe conor mcguire thanks a million for joining us thanks very much adrian it was a pleasure